making sure you're balancing your smoothies. Okay, if I've got on you on green smoothies, and most of you at some point in the day are on green smoothies, balancing those, there is a reason we are looking and seeking out micronutrients, okay? We're looking for vitamins and minerals and balance. We're bringing in a lot of greens for omega-3 fatty acids, some omega-6, protein. Where do you get your protein, Tanya? Raw plants, right? But there is a great, I mean, the reason I have had such success and longevity on a low-fat, raw, vegan diet is because I create balance every day. And when you learn to do that, you can get a handle on these things. You can get a handle on, first of all, your health, okay? You can also get a handle on your cravings. You can get a handle on you choosing the food and it not choosing you. You're ahead of the hunger game, you know? So anyway, there's a couple things I want to tell you. We're gonna talk about balancing snacks and I wanna talk about the addition of greens in your smoothies. This is something that people are leaving out. They don't wanna put them in there and it's like, oh, you can watch a lot of raw vegans, not a lot. You got some of them not even doing greens, which is ludicrous. Okay, you're fixing to see why. It's absurd, all right? And to advise that to people is irresponsible. But I'm just saying that to y'all. So anyway, I mean, I have regenerated my health with greens, chia seeds, a wide variety of fruits and veggies, you know, a low but adequate amount of plant fat, lots of hydration, body movement. Healing is real, my friends. But you can see a lot of even long-term or raw vegans, they fall off, they start eating all this beige food. Now they're not even concerned about nutrients. You know, it's about how much Chipotle can they shove in their body like it's a dang eating contest. That's gluttony. And your body doesn't need that. It needs everything it needs, no more, no less, and nothing it doesn't, right? Let's just take a look at this right quick, okay? Now, when you are having your fruit smoothies, your green smoothies, make sure you are living in your box. You understand? And I'm gonna talk about breaking that down if you don't wanna have all liquefied, say, lunch that day. But today I'm talking about the nutrient content. Make sure you are having the amount of greens that I suggested in there. Or, or let me say it would be a great idea. I don't like to sound bossy like that. But I've been doing this a long time, and I don't know a lot of things in this world, but I pretty much got this down pat. Yes, there's room for improvement, <clears throat> room for knowledge um, and growth. But for right now, I feel like I, I'm on my game with this, and I can't wait to see. I mean, how do you feel about where you're, when you're going to be <clears throat> in four years? Because in, in a couple months, I'll be... 46, so in four years, I'm gonna be 50 years old. I, I can hardly even imagine the health I will obtain by then. How exciting is that? Anyway, let's look at this. Let's say, for example, you had a basic green smoothie. Bear with me on this, okay? And, and you had a basic fruit smoothie. You know, people wonder, like, well, where do you get your calcium? Where do you get your iron? A lot of these micronutrients and nutrients you're talking about, vitamins and minerals, are coming from greens. Are they not? Because people are leaving those in the garden, so to speak. Let's say this. Let's say you have a basic fruit smoothie versus that basic fruit smoothie, and you're adding in, say, three cups of kale. You also would change the nutritional profile if you change the kale to dandelion greens or spinach or Swiss chard. You see what I'm saying? But today I just want to talk about one and we'll talk about kale, okay? So let's say you have a basic fruit smoothie and it sounds like this. One orange. Let's just give you a wide variety, okay? One orange, two bananas, two cups pineapple, and a cup and a fourth of mixed berries. Let's say that's your basic smoothie. Versus your basic smoothie, and you add in three cups of kale. Same fruit, OK? 
okay? First of all, you realize that you're going to up the volume of that. You're gonna create satisfaction and satiation. There is a component of satisfying your cravings with also volumetric, so to speak. You have more fiber and bulk in there, right? So that's one component. Also, if you don't have like enough fatty acids, your body will start craving those. You'll not understand why you don't feel balanced. So back to the point. Let's just say, let's just look at the two nutritional profiles. I just jotted this down quickly, but bear with me. This is very interesting. So, let's say you got your fruit smoothie. Okay, from, ca from calcium, you would have 110 um, micrograms, okay? Now, 110. With kale, you've gone up to 331. Now, the daily... Um, the recommended daily intake of that, of calcium, is a thousand, oh, that's milligrams, a thousand milligrams. Now, 110 milligrams versus 381, and the recommended daily is a thousand. So as you see, if you even up that, that to three and a half cups of kale, you've just hit your half of your daily value that you need with one smoothie. Are you picking that up? Okay, what about iron? You've got um, two versus 5.4, okay, when the daily allowance is eight, all right? Do you see the difference in what I'm saying? Okay, what about uh, magnesium? 118 versus uh, 196 when the recommended daily intake is 310. Potassium, 1,484 from the fruit versus almost 2,400 with added kale when you have a recommended daily intake of 4,700. Are y'all picking this up? There's no need to be specific, so specific on the numbers, though I wanted to write that down for you. Because you can map this out in a lot of ways, depending on what fruit, what... The point is, why the heck are people leaving the greens out? It's the cornerstone of my health, okay? What about uh, micrograms coming from folate? 157 from just fruit versus 225 with the kale with your daily um, recommended intake being 400. This is not even with the addition of your amount of chia seeds that I've suggested. Friends, a well-rounded, well-balanced out green smoothie gives you everything you need and nothing you don't. It keeps you balanced. It creates volume. Fruit for a high-flying, high-vibe, high-energetic experience, okay, a high-flight, with greens for a long flight of sustainability. Fruit and greens is my thing. Do you see? People aren't doing it, but you are. Don't leave those out. So I wanted to point that out. Good morning, everybody. Hey, Mary. Hey, Lisa, how are y'all? Um, so I wanted to tell you that. I also want today to talk about snack snacks, okay? So here's the thing. When you're having your snack, again, you're in your box. What is your box? It's the amount of calories that I have suggested for you, okay? Um, it depends on where you are, and we have mapped that out specifically for you. Really try to stay in that realm, your box, okay? Now, here's the thing. For snacks, maybe you're just using your amount of calories. Maybe you're going to use frozen bananas, and you're going to whip those into a... A banana ice cream okay so then you're gonna balance that with celery very important the balance again right I like to suggest celery there for your snack because it creates a lot of bulk and it gives you some natural sodium in your day but you could also use Swiss chard has a pretty high amount of sodium in there if you're a person who cannot hardly stand to stomach celery you know and some people are like that but you know it's like I told you yesterday if you're not liking celery juice 
drink it anyway, right? That's like, I don't know. You have to parent yourself, and it's good for you. It really is. So do it anyway. But, um, oh, I think that was somebody in the group talking about seaweed. They didn't stand. But in my last group, I had a couple people like, celery like it was the devil. Like, you'll get used to it. You really will. You'll, you'll begin to crave it, which is interesting. Um, so anyway, for your snack, basically you, you could just have your fruit and you could have your celery or let's say Swiss chard. But you could also make that into an interesting thing. Let's say you take your amount of calories and you, you use apples. And let's say you run those through a greater blade in your food processor, right? So for your amount of calories, that is a lot of apples. Again, volumetrics, right? So you're running that through. You've got your apples in there, and maybe you put in some lemon, okay, which is gonna keep that from browning too. So then you put in a little bit of warming spices, maybe cinnamon, and let me point out that cinnamon helps you also to balance the blood sugar, which is great because the more control you have, the better. So let's say you have that and you put in some nutmeg, allspice, maybe um, a little raw vanilla bean powder, whatever. Some warming spices, some, some pumpkin spice spice, um, apple uh, pie spice, you see what I'm saying? The spice, baby. And so you have that. And then you have your celery and you're scooping that up. Do you understand the volume in that for your snack? Okay. Also, another thing you can do. Now, this is a di little different play in on that. Um, Good morning, Dawn. How are you? Hey, Bree. Hey, Mickey. People are in the house of love and light. <laughs> anyway, if you're just getting here, of course, this will go up for the pen post in a minute, and you can see it all. Yes, you can. But I want to see if y'all can guess this song in a minute now that people are here. Um, but back to the snack. So here's the thing. Let's just say you want to have a dip instead. The point is, you are having that amount of calories with your fruit for a high-flying experience, right? Energetic movement of the plane and then balancing out for a long flight with celery or Swiss chard. I want you to get the sodium hit. So, here's another thing you could do. Let's just, I have a lot of no-fat dressings. So, let's say you took... Here's an easy one. This tastes like Italian dressing. Not Italian. Um, uh, French dressing, okay? It tastes like French dressing. And then you can take that amount of French dressing and you can dip in your celery. But you could also have some other veggies, some very low calorie, like maybe you wanna have some sliced cucumbers or sliced zucchinis, right, with your celery and your amount of fat, I mean your amount of calories. So here's what you're gonna do. Say I've suggested that you have about 300 calories, adjust accordingly please, from fruit right there. So let's say you're having mango, and that's approximately two medium mango, depending on how much mango meat, so to speak, you get out of there. You're gonna take it, you're gonna put it in your blender, and you're gonna blend it with one red bell pepper. Blend it smooth, pour it into a very beautiful dipping container because we like to be cute, right? Fix your food up pretty. You know why? Because you deserve that. You really do. So now you've got this no fat French dressing dip and you are then dipping your celery in there and your low calorie veggies if you want. Are y'all picking this up? So you can look up on my channel, type in no fat dressings, no fat dip, or I have a lot in my butterfly dressing book, right? Now here's a couple right here. Here's an example. We've got mustard mango, okay? We've got one cup of champagne mango, which are the small kind of yellow ones. They look like little partridges. If you turn them to the side and you can put an eyeball on there, that's very cute. So anyway, your partridge mango. So, and you, of course, would adjust that accordingly depending on your calories. Then we've got, look, we have the celery in here. And then we have a half tablespoon of mustard powder. The point is you bulk that up and then you can have some additional veggies to dip. Are you 